Hello, good evening and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. This is your three and a half thousand subscriber special, uh, your question and answer special. Ask us anything. We've got some questions already set up that you've asked us already, but get into the chat um, and uh, get your questions in for the boys. We've almost got a full house. We've got Martin, Sam is back. George, Rich is back, and uh, and our man Kev as well. So almost a full house. Um, and yeah, we've got all the questions in. We've got um, news of our competition. You've still got time to enter the competition, which I'll get into in a minute. And um, and we will also be announcing a new logo for the uh, for the Villa Park podcast, which has caused a lot of debate over this past weekend. So <laughs> we will get we will get into that, but. Um, First of all, um, just want to give everyone a chance to get into the competition um, that we've got on Twitter and Instagram. We've linked up with Matty723, uh, um, who is a wonderful designer, and um, he's got a fantastic print that he's given us uh, for the channel. Uh, this is a limited edition one as well um, for Dennis Mortimer, obviously holding up the Euro European Cup. Um, all you need to do is follow, um, is go to Twitter, Villa Park Pod on Twitter or on Instagram and follow the instructions. Basically, you need to follow his Twitter page or his Instagram page. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like and retweet um, the particular tweet that I've got or like and comment on the Instagram post. So I'll give you all a chance to do that over the course of the show. I'll keep checking. I've got my spreadsheet set up and the random name generator. So get into the competition. Um, boys... Who should I come to first? Uh, Martin, you were on. You were on first. Three and a half thousand subscribers. Um, I think I remember doing this when we hit fifteen hundred, like a Q and A special. But yeah. to get to now be on two thousand more subscribers than that. Actually, we we're on like three thousand five hundred and fifty. We've seemed to have gone crazy with the Jamaican supporters of late. Um, but yeah, I mean, hmm. your thoughts on on three and a half thousand? It's just mad, isn't it? Ah, uh, mad number. Like, I remember the first time I was on it and I was actually lying in my bedroom. Didn't think I was actually going to be in the podcast. And next thing I know, hang on, give me a minute. Came off. Then I'm up in the attic and I'm literally on my phone doing it. And to now, like, we've got over 3,500 subscribers on YouTube. It's been an unbelievable journey. The growth's been unreal as well. Not just from, you know, Rich or uh, any of the lads here, but from the fan base. Like, you know, the support's always been welcomed and you know, hopefully 3,500 more to come. Exactly, exactly. Sam, um, I'll come to you first, then George, because obviously you boys answered the call um, <laughs> when when little Rich Bartlett was born, when uh, little Rich Bartlett Jr. was born, um, to, to come onto the podcast. And um, we were obviously part of a different channel in those days, and we had like maybe two people watching, if we were lucky. <laughs> um, and we do keep talking about this, but... To be at three and a half thousand, mate, it must be it, it is crazy, isn't it, Sam? Ah, oh, it's mental. I, yeah, I remember doing the podcast and we had one person watching, and that was my mate. Um, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't even watching. I think he just put it on and went to the kitchen. Um, <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's been a journey, man. It's 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 a weird one because I've never like personally, I've never really watched the subscriber count. I've just always enjoyed doing like having a conversation. Is I always find it a good way to then as you boys know and now our three and a half thousand subscribers now i tend to get a little bit aggy straight after a game and it was, uh, <laughs> it was it's a good way to just kind of vent but now we've got this villa park pod family going on which is amazing and everyone's so invested and you see the same faces and new faces in the comments every week and it's just um yeah it's just it's amazing what it's developed into and i, I don't really know what it is but i, I was at villa park the other day and someone stopped me and said, oh, you're on the Villa Park pod. I, and I was like, what? <laughs> well, <the> first <laughs> and and even, even more weird, it happened to me when I was in New York as well, when, we, when I was in the bar. So it's, you know, just getting recognised by other fans for my shitty opinions. And yeah, it's absolutely mental. And it's uh, it's a credit to the, to the work that you boys have done. And yeah, big congrats to everyone involved. Awesome, mate. Awesome. And yeah, George, always the voice of reason on the pod. You've said yourself... People who you stand stand with at the game or sit with at the game have said, "Oh, you do the podcast, don't you?" And like, <laughs> but it must be just mad to like, you know, like you say, mate. Like Sam said, there three and a half thousand now. It's 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 it, it is a bit it is a bit crazy. 
Yeah, it's amazing, lads. Yeah, God, like Sam said, going back to them early days, all it ever really felt like was just having a chat with a few Villa fans. And it was, it was better having a chat with you than just having a massive row on Facebook or Twitter after every <laughs> defeat, after every defeat, which felt like near enough every week at that time. <clears throat> so, yeah, come on and have a chat with the lads. And, um, yeah, it's been great watching it grow. You know, six, seven of us now, you know, Gareth, Little Max and that. We've got some good numbers now. And, you know, it's a, it's a credit to everyone, and especially you, uh, Rich, mate, because you hold this thing together, as we all know. And uh, you put the blood, sweat and the tears in, mate. And we'll see, we all appreciate that. And... Uh, I'm sure so do the 3,500 subscribers we've got. Nice one. Yeah, but it, 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 I just love doing it. And like similar to you boys, it's just talking about Villa. And Rich, back in the day, we, we, we talked about this, didn't we? Like the, the Tony Daly thing came up on my memories or something. Was it three years yeah. ago or something last week? So, yeah. like... Yeah, I mean, obviously we've been doing it for about five or six months before then, and it it is just crazy, isn't it, to think like we just started off going, oh, let's let's jump on like a a, t- a Microsoft Teams call or Zoom meeting, and then we just mm. and you know it's it's a channel now, mate. Yeah, there was um, a couple of days ago it was the four year anniversary of lockdown, um, and yeah, I, you know we've obviously known each other for a long, long time, and um, I remember you reaching out, and I thought, well, what's the worst that can happen? We it's, you know, just point it out there. It's just George was saying, you're just talking to your mates about football. And I, I, I feel like I need to intro some of the shows a bit more, though, because I used to enjoy my little Garth of Tank. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and, and, and little Arthur arrived and I went on paternity leave and it just kind of went from there, really. And more faces got involved and, you know, talented people with good opinions in the, in the villa um, decided Plus to. Kevin. Well, and Kevin as well, yeah, G joined. <laughs> um, yeah, and like it, it, it blows me away, and, and sometimes I probably don't give it the um, like the, the, the time to appreciate what is what it's become. And I remember, oh, Martin, I met you a while back at, um, before one of the games, and you were with two huge fans of the podcast, and uh-huh. I kind of felt like a little bit of a celebrity, which to Sam on your point is just weird, right? Because you know, yeah. we're just having conversations that we'd have in a pub, but we're just doing it in front of a, a webcam, really. Yeah, it's mad. And they always thought they knew us, and we were kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, as, as everyone said, Rich, like, you, you're the driving force behind it, and you've, you know, you could quite easily have gone on paternity leave with me when I, uh, when Arthur arrived, but, you know, you, you got some people involved. And, and also, the, the different shows that you put on, it's not just let's talk about a Villa victory or let's talk about a Villa defeat. I was watching the, the um, Dale during the week. I mean, fantastic, really intelligent guy. Um, and he spoke about his growth, actually. What an X jumping up to 50,000 people. Yeah, yeah. He said all I was doing, all I do is just talk about, about Villa, really. And But yeah, you should be really proud of, of what you've achieved. So um, yeah, good on you. And here he is, Kev. The Mr. Motivator himself, say, save the best till last. I think we've got, I don't know who it was who put a comment in. I was going to read it. Like, I'm trying to find it. I'm trying it's to find oh, it. Michael, it's, uh, it's Michael. It has to be Michael. Three and a half thousand subs. Congratulations. I'm sure we'll all agree in the gospel of Kevin each week. But thank F. We did not give him the keys to drive Leon Bailey to Biggles Wade FC on a free transfer. But yes, Always, always the man to drive Villa forward, drive this podcast forward as well with your motivation or speak. But what do, what are your thoughts on the three and a half thousand, mate? Oh, you're on mute. Brilliant. <laughs> Still no. on mute. No, 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 no. <laughs> he's his big moment, boys, and he's, oh. he's dropped his lines. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna there leave. he is. I'm gonna leave. There he is. Um, it's been an absolute delight. It really has. It's been, um, you know, I've um, had an interesting few years in my life and Rich B, who I've known for, you know, best part of 35, 36 years, said, get involved in a podcast, Kev. You know, he's doing a bit less. So, uh, you know, I'm hugely appreciative of that. Obviously, I have to deal with, um, you know, some of you guys each week. Um, nice to see mm-hmm. Sam's on as well because Watkins didn't score. That's always, always, always classic, isn't it? <laughs> Next time. The joke, it so. wasn't Villa. It doesn't count, Kev. Yeah, no, yeah. Um but it's it just been magic. I, what I love about it more than anything else is just you can see, obviously, we all love the villa. So we agree, disagree, whatever it might be. It's the same in all the comments. I love that, you know, we, we've got people in the comments chatting from, you know, different parts of the world, like via, via this forum. And it's just absolutely amazing. But we all share that one thing, obviously, which is 
the love of the villa and it's just been an unbelievable journey particularly because it's just been up and up and up hasn't it under unai um you know i was involved in the uh the, the steven gerrard days as well and um and then since since mr unai has been involved it's, the hockey stick has just been absolutely crazy in terms of both villa's trajectory but also the the podcast growth and um I think three and a half K is just the start, really. So yeah, thanks to you all, Rich. Absolutely, you are the. Um, I mean, you're all over it, mate. You like the Holly Willoughby, aren't you? Of a uh, Holly Willoughby, of the. Uh, Someone trying to the... kill him. What? What? Someone trying to kill him. What? <laughs> Still about that. <laughs> I need to make Philip Schofield, but I thought I'd go Holly Willoughby. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, go, yeah. go back on mute. Yeah, back on yeah, mute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, back on mute. <laughs> But, um, no, but listen, like, you know, everyone plays their part, but Richie's, I mean, I've said it many times before, I think Richie's one of the best podcast hosts out there, period, um, in terms of what he does, how he brings it all together, different types of shows. Um, so, yeah, credit, credit to everyone, but especially Rich S. Cheers, boys. But, yeah, obviously, it wouldn't be anything without, like you said, the people supporting us. And, like, it's mad when you get people from, you know, Australia with, like, Adamski, obviously, um, Belgium with Rub and all sorts of people. Like I've had loads of Jamaican people like commenting on the video since the one about Leon Bailey. It's just it's just mad. Um, but yeah, obviously nothing without you guys supporting us. Um, so let's get into some of the comments. Obviously Duncan, evening all. Congrats on the three and a half k. Um, Rachel, it, good evening to you. Rich, uh, three and a half k. Congrats. Hashtag Villa Park Pod. Uh, Deontay, happy Sunday, everyone. Congrats to the VPP crew on three and a half thousand subs. Um, Lewis is in the chat as well. Good evening to you, Lewis. Um, let me just star this question. Uh, oh, I'll come back to it. There we are. Um, who else is in the chat? Uh, Martin Leonard Senior. Well done, lads, on the three and a half K mark. Ryan, good evening all. Congratulations. Gene, good evening, everyone. Congrats on the three and a half thousand subs. Um, M- Michelle, good evening to you. Bear in the garden, good evening. Um, and we've got some mm-hmm. questions in as well. But, yeah, thank you all of you for, for your support. Um, it is it is great. Mark as well, what a job you do, mate, doing all the thumbnails, doing everything for us, like the designs of everything, fantastic. I'll just message him and it's done within like 10 minutes. Just what a guy. So fantastic, uh, fantastic help from you, mate. James, good evening to you. Um, John, congratulations, guys. Your podcast is great for people like me who have moved away and can't get to game so much up the villa from Torquay. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, Michael, can I just say the success of all villa podcasts is our integrity. We may not always agree, but we are honest. Um, mm. So I'm disappointed with the misleading comments on Bailey. Well, I, I talked about that on my um, on my kind of little mm. little uh, opinion on it. But yeah, I do, I do think, and that's what we've always said, lads, isn't it? The one thing with our podcast is we don't always agree on everything, and we'll we'll happily you know disagree, and we'll we'll come to you know we'll 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 chat it out and we'll talk it through and that's that's i guess one of our things that we've always said mm. i think we always agree on everything don't we boys <laughs> well michael always agrees with kevin we know that kevin yeah he, michael kevin always. has michael on the payroll that's why <laughs> <laughs> hey, kevin, kevin's got this 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 weird way of like bringing people around to his train of thought i, I was battling with him quite early on about being too positive, and now I'm 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 fully on board the Kev train. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm might maybe go. move into organised religion next, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, someone already said here something about the Church of Kev. So, um, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah I'm now, it, now it has. It's not a podcast. It's not a live episode or podcast without a motivational speech from Kev. So so end. Kev can say hello to me, and I can feel immediately like he's trying to sell me something. But I don't know what you do <laughs> for a living, Kev. But if it's not sales, then you're wasted. <laughs> It is, it is. John, uh, congratulations. That's great, Pod. You'll be at 7K by Christmas. If I'm right, I'll expect a prize. Well, you never know, mate. You never know. Uh, Adamski's, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, Willie, good. Congratulations on three and a half. Let's get to 4K. Exactly, exactly, mate. We're almost at 3,600, to be honest, which is great. Um, uh, Mick in the house as well. Great to, and uh, Michael says Kevin is a Jedi. There you go, mate. Uh, right, so let's get into the questions. Uh, so um, we've got ve- we've got a few different ones, um, a couple of serious ones, couple of kind of um, 
sort of less less serious ones. So let's let's do this one from Michael. Uh, I'll start with you, Kev, because um, you were last on the on the last uh, little roundup. So for each of us, where did your love for Villa begin? Um, I didn't really have much choice, to be honest, because my dad grew up on a road next to Trinity Road. Um, and um, I went to school in Aston, the grammar school, along with Richard Bartley as well. Um, so uh, I used to have to literally like walk. There was just a park separating the school and Villa Park. And the very first picture of me is in a claret and blue baby bouncer with a Villa program next to me and a scarf wrapped around my neck. Probably a bit too tight, actually, for a newborn. But yeah, so uh, although, you know, someone have got their wish. Anyway, but um, so um, I, it was just in me from the start, you know, and my old man was like one of the kids back in the uh, in the 50s who was, you know, looking after looking after cars for a bit of cash on the streets of uh, Iraq, around Villa Park. And he went up to... Um, to Lewis's, the shop in 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 Birmingham City Centre when we won the FA Cup '57 and held the trophy, so it was kind of just so in me. And um, and I, as a kid, you know, like those kind of formative ages, you know, you know what football is. But I always think like, what age? You always remember football, I think, from back in the day from your first cup final. First cup final, I probably could just about remember like clearly watching was Everton uh, Liverpool in '89. I remember when um, Stuart McCall got a couple of goals. So that season for Villa would have been the season when. David Platt was doing his thing and Gordon Cairns was doing his thing. So I knew about our history, but I didn't really know too much about it. But that that era under Graham Taylor, um, David Platt, Gordon Cairns, you know, the, the likes of obviously Paul McGrath, who, who came at that sort of time as well. That was um that was the start for me, really. And obviously it's been a bit topsy turvy since then. But yeah. Um and it's mad to think that when I got into into football, well, when I think three of us, the two Riches and, and me, were alive, we were we were when we were born, we were champions of England, literally. Well, uh, to be fair, um, Rich S, you would have been born at the start of the season of us winning the league. Yeah. I was born in the middle of the season. Rich B would have just been born when we just lifted the trophy. We all would have been like zero to one year old. We won the European Cup. So to think that now, the equivalent of, of like when then we got into football was like going back from now to 2016. Imagine thinking like 2016, Villa won the, uh, when Brexit was, Villa won the European Cup. So mm. it's been a it's it's been a mad journey, and a mad rise, and um, obviously been a lot happened since then. Not enough trophies, but um, I'm sure those times are coming around again. Absolutely, Rich. Similar story for you. Um, yeah, similar story. Um, my dad was a Villa fan. My uncles were Villa fans. Um, my mum's brother was a Villa fan. So my uncle on that side of the family. So you don't get a choice essentially. Um, not like it is nowadays where there's so much exposure to all games and there's so many platforms and so much media coverage. You just pretty much got told this was your team and like it or, or you know, or, or lump it, you, you were, you were stuck with it. And I think, I think it's certainly been character building being a Villa fan. Um, I think I can say that for the majority of my lifetime. And even over the last few years for any fans coming into football, supporting the Villa, like, there's a lot to be said about not getting to choose who wins the league to be your team. Um, and I've got some mm. really fond memories, you know, of, of growing up with friends like Kevin at Villa Park, my dad, who I go down with um, a season ticket with him now, uh, season tickets in, in, in the past. As Kevin pointed out, I went to school within the, like, the stone's throw of, of Villa Park. My summers were spent at uh, Villa Leisure Centre. When it still was there, I went to my first gig, went to watch Ocean Colour Scene play at Villa Leisure Centre. So, you know, Aston's kind of part of my my, my DNA. Um, I had a little stint working at the Blues, which is an he interesting did. story. Kevin worked there as well. We had a we had a brilliant scam on the go <laughs> down at the Blues, and I think. I think there's not enough evidence to put us That's down. That's why they've got no money yeah. now. Well, yeah, 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 yeah so, 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 we, we, we started their, their downfall. So if you, if, you ever bought, if you ever bought a pie in the late 90s from St. Andrews and you paid nine quid for it, I apologise. That was my markup that I put on. But um, yeah, but you know, every, everything always came back to, to the villa. And it's, it's funny, Kev, you put it out like when we were born, we, we were the best team in Europe. When my eldest was born, we got relegated, and I just thought it's not fair. Like I've not given her the, the the start that I I had, but yeah, you know, I think the one thing that 
that is good about this, this podcast, actually, and I was going to mention it earlier, is everyone's got a different story, right? You know, Kevin and, and, and I have similar stories, but the rest of you will have a totally different story. You're all from different parts of, of you know, of, of the world, and it's, it's really good good to have this platform to be able to interact right. and, and perhaps that's why fans from all over the world listen because they they can relate to people that aren't living you know within 20 minutes drive of, of villa park and yeah so it was always going to be uh, i've got a, a villa teddy from when i was a baby my grandma was a villa fan I, you know i had no choice so Fair play, fair play. A um, few comments coming in. Michael went to school with Oscar the drummer in Ocean oh, Colour Scene. He's there you go. Um, oh, Gary says, we've got more subs than the Russian Navy. Well done, lads. <laughs> this podcast is the only one I watch religiously now. I'll watch the others occasionally. And where would we be without your jokes, mate? Where, yeah. where would we be? Um, Alex says, greetings from Miami. How great was Conzi yesterday? We'll come on to that later because there's loads of comments coming in. But thank you for tuning in, mate. It's much, much appreciated. Um, what else, who else have we got? Gary all said, all down to the 82 Cup win for me. Loved them ever since. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who else, uh, where else we've got people Zansky saying. has a good one. Where is he? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Uh, my whole family being Villa family going back to before World War II but probably longer um, David says I'm a Villa fan from Stoke and everyone always says but you're from Stoke from primary school he's been a Villa fan and still now 52 we are chosen exactly exactly um, George I think I might have asked you this before but for the, for the purposes of the podcast how uh, how did your love of Aston Villa come? Yeah mine was a bit weird to be fair like I like you most of you probably were guided by your dad or whatever but like my mum didn't like football, my dad doesn't like football. No, no one did. The only person that had any interest was my uncle, and he didn't support anyone either. So mm. it was just kind of up to me to just sort of like start watching it and and sort of pick someone. And yeah, for some reason, one I remember it was like a January afternoon on a Sunday. Do you remember like the big match they used to have on ITV before mm-hmm. like Sky come along? And uh, and we had Leeds at home, and uh, yeah, I think it was a year Leeds went on and won the league. And I remember all I remember is just Lee Chapman, Gordon Strachan, Gary Speed. They absolutely battered Villa on the day. Like Villa, you never see a Villa Park pitch like it. It was brown. Like you're thinking, there's no, there's no reason to be picking Villa on this day. Yeah, Leeds won four one. Absolutely romped the game. And for some reason, I just, I just, I, something hooked me that day about Villa. I don't know. I don't know if it was the name, the colour of the shirt. It, it could be anything. But from that day, I was Villa, and that was that. And like, I think the following year was when, um, you know, we're under Big Ron, when we we had a really good tilt at the title with Saunders and Atkinson and uh, yeah, Paul McGrath, Sean Teal, all of them. And I think that was the year, if I'm honest, that really did hook me. You know, we were a great watch back then, weren't we? We were like the, yeah. the hipster's choice and everything. And I think that's what really, really got me hooked. And yeah, and um, yeah, it's been like 30 odd years of a roller coaster ride ever since, ups and downs and everything in between. But awesome, mate. Awesome. And uh, what about you, Sam? How did your love of Villa come about? Yeah, I know I sound more cockney than George, but I'm, um... But born and raised in Brum, born in the QE, so about five miles away from Villa Park. And, um, so it was pretty much the start of it. Actually, my whole family are Man United fans, apart from my brother, um, who's a who's obviously a Villa fan, and uh, he's ten, ten years older than me as well. So by the time I was born, he was already claret blue. Um, so I, I I also didn't have a choice. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just something about Villa. I, I guess like you know. I've got a little boy who's you know, 18 months old and, and I'm just all I've got is like hope that he absolutely loves football and loves Villa um, and I guess my brother felt the same and, and he got his wish because I was I was obsessed from as early as I can remember Panini sticker books um, obviously I grew up in a, a different generation I don't remember the success in 96 when we last won something I was only five so um, didn't get to see too much of that but I remember the the old days, the Gareth Barrys, Lee Hendrys, the you know Hugo Ehiogs. Um, Lee Hendry used to be my favourite player when I was a kid because he come up with a worldie every now and then. Um, and yeah, we've always been shit, but I, uh, as far as long as I've known, <laughs> we've never really been any good, <clears throat> uh, bar the Martin O'Neill years. Uh, but just something about Villa, maybe I'm a, a glutton for punishment, but. Um, yeah, just always, always have been. I moved to London when I was when I was thirteen, and that was a big test because that was when Arsenal were the Invincibles. I moved to North London um, with my family, 
and everyone around me was an Arsenal fan and a Spurs fan. And I was a lot, I was getting obviously getting <laughs> ripped for my little brummy accent, supporting Villa, and, and Arsenal were the best team uh, at that point, arguably ever. Um, so I thought there'd be some temptation, but not even a little bit. I didn't couldn't care less. Just uh, always had fun with the Villa. So yeah, that's that's, that's me. <laughs> Class, mate. Great story. Great story. Um, we've got a few more. Um, Rich said uh, his parents were old school Caribbean and didn't like football, but his dad's brother was seeing a woman who worked at the villa and they used to hang around the park opposite. Good times. That's it. See? And uh, Gary said, always remember at school, I was the only villa fan in Barnsley. Everyone else was the usual United and Liverpool fans, etc. Except for one lad who supported Queen's Park Rangers. So there you go, up in Barnsley there. Mm. Um, Villa Forever podcast, Chad says, support Aston Villa because of my mum. My dad's friend supported Birmingham City, but went into the Aston Villa store, bought me an Aston Villa shirt. Excellent stuff, mate. Um, Rachel said, lived in Great Bar and we used to drive past Villa Park when my family and my na- and I visited my nan and Villa Park. Villa is her first real football memory. Um, Martin, how about yourself? How did it come about for you then? How did it come about for me is a great question. Uh, well, you see, my dad, he's a rugby fan. So he was always mad into rugby. So he supports Leinster. So even if you ask him a question about football, it doesn't matter. Leinster's going to win. And that was it. My mother is a Man United fan. However, she's got a bit of a soft spot for West Ham. And I remember I was watching Villa against Birmingham in 2008, I believe. I can't remember the year exactly. But Villa had won 5 1. And I was sort of a Liverpool fan then, like, but I wasn't really. And then when I was watching Villa beat Birmingham 5-1, I don't know what it was. Something just clicked. I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to watch Villa. And then I obviously had a few years of Villa being shit and getting relegated. And then, you know, then coming back and now I'm actually living the good days. So I didn't actually get a good bit of the good days of Villa. I got a small bit of two or three years before it just went spiraling downhill. And now I'm starting to grow with them because all my mates used to slag me because they were Arsenal fans, Man United, Liverpool. And <clears throat> I would just get slagged a bit because Villa were like, were crap, we were in the championship and all this. But I'd still slag the Arsenal fans. We might be in the championship, but we still have a Champions League trophy to our name. And but now I'm, I'm reliving the good times now with Villa. It's been unbelievable. I didn't get to go to my first game until 2021 because I was always asking my mates, I would just come and they were like, no. I was asking, you know, I think I was like 18, 19. I kind of wanted to go, but I didn't want to go by myself. And then my mother said, but you have family in Birmingham. And this is like 2021. I was like, well, you could have told me that a few years ago. But I thought, let's see. Uh, there you're, thought, you're always relying on your dad. Oh, you called out. That's so bad. That's my dad stitching me up. Don't mind him. Uh, so, well, and then, but I, but I thought they would have been Villa fans, my family. But no, they're all blue nose. So, <laughs> when I got there and they were going, what, what made you support Villa? Are you for real? Would you not just support a proper club? I said, like who? Birmingham? Go away. <laughs> so, yeah, and then I've been watching the Villa ever since and got involved in this podcast. So if you ask me, I think I've grown with this podcast as well, I've grown with Aston Villa, which has been a real pleasure. Awesome stuff, mate. Awesome stuff. Mine was, my dad's actually born in London. So he was, I, I think my granddad was liked Arsenal and Wealdstone for a random reason. Um, mm-hmm. So then my dad liked Wealdstone, like they're in the National League. Uh, but then he came to Dudley for teaching practice and needed to find a couple of teams to watch. So he went to watch Birmingham, went to watch West Brom. I don't actually, I don't think he went to watch Blues. I think he went to watch West Brom, Wolves and then Villa. And it just happened to be like the season where we were going for the league. And then that was it. He was hooked, hooked on Villa. And then obviously when I came along, that was my team. So yeah, that's, uh, and I never, never, never wavered since. And obviously, living in Newcastle, my son's a Villa fan. He has to go to school with all these Geordies. He's, he's loving it at the minute, but he certainly wasn't loving it last season. But yeah, um, so yeah, that's it. That's how it. That's how it gets you. Um, so yeah, interesting stories though. It's it's, it's crazy to think, you know, um, about how you how you got your how everyone got their love for for Villa. And um, yeah, 
cracking stories, boys. Um, another question. This is more current, um, so I'm not going to do these in any particular order. But Rich in the chat is in the chat tonight as well. Asked us a couple of questions. Um, so, and there's a lot of people asking this question, and it's current news. So, should we go in for Grealish if he becomes available in the summer? If it would take a reduced salary because we can't pay what he's getting now or anywhere near. Um, so, Sam, you first. Should short answer to this one? Should we? Should we? Should we take Grealish if we can? If he get if he becomes available in the summer? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. In my opinion, <clears throat> and there's never any bad blood to me when he left. The hundred million sorted us out. He went on to do incredible things, and as a club, we grew from him leaving. So. Um, there's no bad blood for me. He's a, a ridiculously good player. I don't think anyone apart from Villa fans knows what he's really capable of. So, yeah, if he's available, I'd, I'd have him back in a heartbeat. Kev? 100%. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The season before we left, that uh, that COVID season, I genuinely think he was the best player in the Premier League. Um, you know, he was absolutely incredible. And um, I know, obviously, he's been, you know, pepped t- to death. Um, obviously, he's got to sell a couple of Premier Leagues and a the Champions League and an FA Cup, so it's not been too bad for him. But he's gone away. He's uh, he's had a bit of an affair now. Come back to the family home, you know. Get get back together, with, you know, with the missus and the kids, and make make it happen, Jack. Because I just think that where we're at now, I think he could do something which I think would always be in him, which he's win a trophy with his boy at club, and I think he could be a pivotal part of us actually doing that and getting us over the line with it with his quality and. Still in his twenties, could still get a good few years out of him, so it would be an absolutely unequivocal yes from me. George, Greedish, yes or it's, no? It's tough, mate. Um, I think we'd all say he's probably the most gifted, talented footballer like that any of us have seen in a Villa shirt. He certainly is for me, anyway. Um, he's been a great player, you know, done his bit for us. Um, would I like to see him back? Well, of course, you know, who wouldn't? I don't think it's viable myself financially and you know i won't bore everyone with that but you know like we chat on the group chat all the time and i i just don't think we could afford that and you know and you've got to remember when greenish left he left because he become bigger than villa and in his mind he probably still thinks that and i think he's gone on he's won all his trophies his brand greenish is now you know a big thing all right he's he's, he's kind of gone a bit out of favor now with pep and he started getting the injuries you know what is he 28 coming up 29. um I, I I wouldn't want him to come back thinking he was doing us a favour to come back, if you know what I mean. So I think sometimes maybe it's just to leave these things in the past, but who knows? Hmm. Martin? Yeah, I would. I think if he was willing to take a wage cut, I think he would relish the chance to play for Villa in the Champions League. I think that, you know, it's, it was his boy called club. I mean, imagine him playing in the Champions League with a boyhood club I think that'd be more passion rather than you know a thrive to win the Champions League which he's already done I think he'd get a better achievement out of it that he's played in Champions League with a boyhood club whether he was involved or not in the, the season prior that if say for example argument's sake Villa got to the last 16 in the Champions League he would he would feel a great pride and you know a passion for doing that for Villa and if he's willing to do all that for the love of his boyhood club, then I say yes. If he's not, no, move on. Rich, um, like in a heartbeat, I he, definitely have him back. I think he's, he's phenomenal. He's not coming back though, he's got no chance. Like, like what George said there, and, and you know, what a bit what Martin was touching on. Like he's got his T-shirt from the village. You know what I mean, he's been there. He's done it. He's, 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 he, why would he want to come back and try and perhaps ruin that reputation that he has with, with Villa fans? There's too many great clubs out there for him to go and play for. He'll probably end up going to, I don't know, maybe Italy, maybe Spain. I just, I'd, I'd love to see him in in a Villa shirt. I'd, I think he, he'd walk into our team. I, I think he'd be phenomenal. I think we'd get him back to the player he was. There's just some comments about, you know, would he be Unai's type of player? I, I, th- I think he, he'd absolutely romp it in, in our team. You know, if we've seen what Bailey's done, what Diaby was like when he first started. He he wants players to run at defenders and, and, and commit defenders and, and create things. But I would be really surprised i mean look, i'm sure there's some financial way we could we could work it but i'd be oh, yeah. really surprised if he decided to come back 
you know, with all respect to Aston Villa, I think Grealish is probably looking at a couple of bigger clubs after Man City than us. Yeah, I think George kind of hit the nail on the head with the brand Grealish. You know, I don't think it does... I don't think it would do anything for Brand Grealish to come back to Villa. No. Like obviously for us, the romantic story would be great, but the, you know, the the PSGs of this world, or you know, Milan's like you say, or even like, you know, I, I don't think a Real Madrid or anything, or maybe even like a Bayern Munich, something like that. That would be that would be more in 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 tune with like the brand of of Grealish mm. as opposed to well, coming back to Villa. Yeah, we we all saw it quite recently with the Beckham documentary. You know, like, he made moves that were best for him. He went and played in different leagues for huge clubs to to grow his his brand. And, yeah, you know, Greenish was bigger than the club when he left, and he, he still is. I think, yeah. I think the problem is, though, is Beckham, when he left, he went to Real Madrid and he was their player of the season, two seasons in a row, and he had lots of success. And one thing that Greenish has experienced over the last couple of years is is now being a, a small fish in a big pond. That's true. Um, I don't mm. think he's come back to Villa. And I think actually, like, when you really think about his conduct since he's left Villa, I, I don't... I, I, there's nothing in this world for us to be envious about Blues fans. Um, but there is one thing. is you know Obviously, Jude Bellingham's left the club and he... I, I like the way he talks about Blues. Now, that even though he's left, he talks about them with a lot of reverence. He goes back and he watches the games and he, you know... He always speaks like whenever he talks about his success now, he always like throws a mention into Blues, even though he only played like ten games there or whatever he whatever he's done. And I think since since Jack's left, I don't think he's he's sort of shown Villa publicly, if if at all, like the kind of I don't know the credit that that we deserve for his uh, where he's got to in his in his career. But I think he's um, I don't think he will come back. I would have him back, but I agree with Rich. I think the um, opportunities for sponsors and for uh, Versace deals and whatever would probably be best mm. placed elsewhere. But um, I think football wise, I think moving back to the Villa, being that talisman um, playing the kind of football that he wants to play. I think for his football and career, I think a move back to Villa would be better than any move to Bayern Munich or Aid Milan or anything like that. I think he genuinely excel especially if we were in the champions league as well he gets to play the level of football he wants yeah. and he can he can do that whilst being the main man yeah agreed um few people in the chat uh steven says no rachel says not for me she still loves jack but i don't think he's the type same player and i don't think he's an emery type player um adamski says yes it's a great story if he'd take a wage cut um mark says if the price is right bring him home um I don't see Greenish left on any bad terms, like, say, a Southgate or a Delph. No, he definitely didn't leave on bad terms. Um, Rich said Emery would sort out his drinking issues. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. I see, I see one comment that says, uh, or a couple of comments saying, Greenish wouldn't, wouldn't do well abroad. And to be fair to them, he struggles to speak to his teammates in English. Imagine if yeah, he got to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Kevin says, Grealish, nah, that ship has sailed. All the flair has been coached out of him, in my opinion. he get it back. Oh, I think that's a good Yeah, he'd get it back immediately. Yeah. He'd, he'd have, a, like, have that new uh, wind under his wing. He'd love it. Yeah. Uh, Marine Boy said, Percy wouldn't touch Grealish. Damage goods and overpaid. Um, uh, Steven said, yes, but only if we can sell him back on for 100 million. Uh, <laughs> David said, bring him home. Jack left, Bailey right, and he's and he has an understanding with Watkins. And Rich said, mm. we need better players for the Champions League. Squad needs to be good. Um, <laughs> Gary said, he's a winner, I guess. I'd take a swap with Bailey. Oh, no, that is... No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I, think, I think the front three of, of Grealish, Watkins and yeah. Bailey sounds a lot more appetising. Uh, Lewis said, I think Grealish is a worldwide superstar. I think it would be good for the finance of the club. Selling more shirts, etc., more supporters as well. Oh, it absolutely would for us. I'm sure. Yeah, it would. true. Um, he gets a lot of injuries now, though, lads. He does. He does. He does. Well, is that um, because of the way that you know Pep plays? Like it's all very systematic. When he was with us, he wasn't really. No, he was Martin. He was. He was. He, he was. He was. He was, he was like when he got one injury, he was out for a long spell, and then he was back, and then that was it. But like, yeah. But it's now at Man City, he's getting niggles and niggles and niggles. Is that because he's? You know, because it's so systematic that he's getting we, these little niggles. Yeah, yeah. 
I, 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 yeah, I think as well, he's, he's probably that desperate to try and get himself back into the team. He might even be coming back that little bit too soon every time. Um, uh, few people in the chat, and I'll open this out so anyone can answer. Uh, Grealish or Williams? Uh, is that, I think there's been a couple is that Serena? of... Is that Serena? Is that Mark Williams? Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that Mark Williams? <laughs> <laughs> Nico Williams. Nico. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen him play much. Um, yeah. But I hear he's very good. Yeah. I guess he'd be a, a bit cheaper. Uh, I don't know. Do you know what? I think a better question, no offense, a good question, but a better question would be seriously, considering our situation, really should be Dace. Someone else has asked that as well. Have they asked it in there? Yeah, really should be yeah. Dace. Because considering what you get for him, transfer fee being a lot, lot lower, the buyback clause. Oh, there you go. Of course, it was Michael. Of course, it was Michael. Of course, it was. Of course it was. Yeah. He just texted in the Kev. Did he text you saying that? Yeah. Mitch, Mitch, what a text. Thanks, Michael. Here's your 50 quid. Oh, what? So sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He sent me a Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> Snapchat. Oh, yeah. On, your, on your Blackberry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd have so, the base back. I'd have the yeah. Back. I'd have the days the back in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'd have the days and not back like separate from point. from Greenish because it's kind of like a, it'd never be an either or. But just in general, like I, I thought he played really well in the preseason. Did he score yeah, like I mean, a, a Rabona? Did he score oh, like a Rabona? Yeah. Yeah. He scored so a Rabona for Hull. He, he's he's looked absolutely class for Hull. I know it's a different level, but mm. I I was confused as to why we let him go for five million. Um, in the first pure place, profit like, for like the financial fair play, Sam. So like that's pure five mm-hmm. million pound profit as well as yeah, the other five million. Player. What is five million like? What does yeah, that? Yeah, mean I think he would have played a bit this year as well. He would have done. Was that that's like a, that's like one match of of you know chicken tikka pies at the middle? Yeah, like, but what you, five million does? Especially where Rich is selling it. I know. Yeah, I'll get you seven million, Sam. <laughs> seven million, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you get it off the blues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Next question. Next question. Um, and this is a few people again have asked this one over the last few weeks. Um, do we need to move from Villa Park to increase revenue and take the club forward? Um, let's go to George. Oh, bloody hell. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, mate. <laughs> I knew you would say yeah. that. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. You knew I was struggling with that one, didn't you? Yes, George. Appreciate that, mate. <laughs> Listen, it's, 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 the, it's the battle of two evils, isn't it? You've got a beautiful, traditional, original, old school ground, you know, probably the most, probably, it's probably the most classic ground left in this country, I'm, in my opinion, you know, and, and, and ex pros, you hear it from ex like fans, ex pros. Villa Park's got, it's got something, hasn't it? That's, oh. that's what's going for it. But then at the same time, <laughs> It's in the middle of Aston, unattractive part of the Midlands, shit transport links. You know, it's all right, it's got the M6 by it, hooray, but I don't know, I don't think you're growing, are you? You're not gonna grow your club playing at Villa Park. No one goes no one goes to Aston for anything, do they? Other than a match day. You're not gonna get no tourists, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get the hype train in Aston, so I don't know. Are we ever gonna get tourists in there, George? Like I I just don't feel like Villa's that kind of club. Like I have been to I've been to the Spurs ground, the new Spurs ground like four or five times and I've got absolutely no problem with it. And I know Ange Postacoglu was talking about it recently about tourists. I don't I don't care about tourists, but like half the people in that stadium were Korean. And again, I, it doesn't I've got, I've got no horse in that race. I, I don't care. But it's um it, it's yeah, I just it's just never seemed like something that Villa's gonna be. I just don't ever see us unless Rich entices half of Jamaica to come to Villa Park every week. I don't yeah, know. no, you're you're quite you're quite right to say that, Sam. But it's just the way modern football's going now, isn't it? I mean, I'm hearing like rumours out of Spurs now that they're trying to they're basically trying to force the old boys, the old season to get older, out of it. They're trying to price them out of it and replace them with tourists because yeah, but you're never going to the ones that spend all the dough. Yeah, but it's like apart from the big ones, you know, the Man United yeah. and, and the Liverpools and and recently Man City, and I still don't even think they're they don't can't get any tourists in. That's why the stadium's always half empty. Apart from them, the big boys. Up north, all the other tourists are in London. You know, well, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, they're all, because, yeah, the London's always yeah. have the advantage. It's because yeah. people will go to London, and part of their trip to London will be to go to a, a match, um, and then, then it's choose out of Tottenham, you know, Tottenham Arsenal, whoever. But yeah, I mean, Rich, Kev, what are your thoughts? It's um, like, but where to, right? Where to? 
because there's nowhere else in Birmingham that's got amazing transport links with all of these, you know, um, positives that we don't have in, in, in Aston. George is absolutely right. Like it's one of the, the, the last kind of big traditional grounds. Someone mentioned in the chat Everton, like they'll be at Goodison in a couple of seasons and it'll all be, you know, brand new, no like character, um, <clears throat> no atmosphere. So I struggle every time I go to, to Villa Park. It's pretty, but, it, but I, I've been to away games and struggle to get away from them. So if you were to, if you were to move Villa Park, Knowing the areas I do, really the only, the only place where you're going to get some proper land with good transport links is over towards Solihull, where it's just full of blue noses. There's there's nowhere else really. Can you think of somewhere else, Kev, that you could take Villa Park to? I think Michael put it in the comments. I'm not just saying it because Michael said it, but like near the market. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here, here we go. go. Here we go. No, but there is loads and loads and loads of like, you know, you've got Brownfield sites in the city centre. Obviously, they all the HS2 stuff and, you know, Curzon Street. There's definitely, I mean, I don't know who owns it and whatever the situation is, but I think if you had something like that, um, you know, I, I've always thought about this. We went, we went on a stag do, Rich member, like going back about 10, 15 years ago. We went to that, um, that Cardiff Wales game at the, um, yeah, the, yeah, the Principality Stadium, and having it having a, a major stadium this <laughs> was just an unbelievably unique experience. Well, like for walking... anyone who, if any of you've seen Kin on BBC, like just started the, to watch that. Yeah, the stadium in Dublin is just slap, slap bang in the middle, isn't it? So yeah, Newcastle, actually, it's... Newcastle, oh, yeah, right Newcastle. there. Oh, it, it, here's it's a question: it's then, crazy, boy. right in this? It's crazy, but that, but then they're wanting to. See the the converse thing there is they're talking Newcastle fans are talking about moving to a site outside of the city centre because they can't build they can't build the you know they can't expand the stadium in in the city centre because you know it, it there's listed buildings around it and there's all sorts of stuff so and obviously space so you know it's already a big already a big stadium so they're talking about moving outside of the the city centre. Well, I'll tell you this for free: there's no listed buildings in Aston, so just oh there are mate Hall. there are. There's plenty. Are there? Very, yeah, I yeah, think not, not within the direct vicinity of the club. I just reckon. I don't know. Uh, Aston uh, uh, Hall's a listed building, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, must be. yeah not but yeah, not like in the direct vicinity where they yeah. want to build anything. I, no. I don't understand why we don't just do what the original plan was: ex, extend the stadium, turn that into a sixty thousand seater. You only need fifteen, eight, what is it, seventeen more thousand, uh, seventy thousand more seats, and then just improve the transport links. Just improve the train station, put another train not station on the other side. Not that simple. They can't seem to get that done, though, can they? Not as simple. No. I mean, with the West Midlands Command Authority, obviously the government, everyone's just trying to get involved in it. Andy Street, the mayor's. But, I mean, it's been an absolute... The, the plan, when it all came out, was obviously they were going to buy all the houses. They were going to do <coughs> the Wembley Way. You know, when you walk from the tube of Wembley to Wembley. Obviously, yeah. it only, only ever used to be for pop concerts, didn't it, until recent years. But um, and, and obviously, that would have been amazing, getting off the station if there'd been more trains. But it's an absolute night, nightmare getting away. I was going to say, I thought George summed it up really nicely. If there's a way financially, because our owners have got billions of pounds, right? If they change the the profit and sustainability, FFP, all that, all that malarkey, and it means we can stay where we are and we can survive because the owners can put their cash in. And obviously, we need we want to, you know, we've got better sponsorship deal coming in soon and all that kind of stuff. Then I would never want us to leave Villa Park really in my heart because I think it, you know, you've only got to look at what Gary Neville says. I mean, he occasionally gets things right, doesn't he? But like he, the way he talks passionately about Villa Park and always has done is, is I think what we as Villa fans know, but I think a lot of away fans when they come to Villa Park know what a proper stadium it is. Yeah. And if we can stay there, magic. But I just do wonder with how football's going, whether we just we might have to do it to compete with some of these other clubs around the country. And if you've got to do it, then the question is, I think Rich B says, you know, near the NEC, obviously, we well, think you've got a lot of land there. Can they do something in the city centre somewhere? It's very unlikely, but I just think we, we if we can make it work where we are now, let's just put it to bed because we all love, we all love Villa Park and hopefully get the transport a bit better. But mm. if not, then I, 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 if, it, if, if you said to me, you can consistently be in the Champions League, but you've got to play at the Cadbury Stadium uh, and it's a new stadium, Subject to us having the, the level of atmosphere good because you go to West Ham, you know, for example, it's not particularly great. If we can get it where your atmosphere is still good and it's constructed in a way where you get the environment and the atmosphere to be really good, then I'd take it. I wouldn't want some soulless bowl ground like a lot of ones you've been to. But if it was that or stay at Villa Park, but you have to struggle a bit because you don't get the money in, then I think I'd take the um, the moving, moving, moving grounds. 
Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so John uh, in the chat, four ninety nine super chat. Thank you very much, mate. Thanks for the content. We all follow the Villa. Awesome, mate. Thank you so much. Just quickly, then, Martin, would you move away from Villa Park uh, for a new stadium? No, no, I wouldn't. Um, I love. See, I live abroad, so you guys obviously live a bit closer, so you more have more of a right of getting up about the transport stuff than I do. But when I go over, I love the feel of going to Villa Park. I love going into the Witten Arms and sharing a few drinks with the lads and just chatting about Villa and literally just doing a two-minute walk into the stadium. Like, I couldn't picture going anywhere else. And if, like Rich is saying there, like, oh, you probably go to Sully Hall, but it's full of blue noses. It probably suit me well because I generally stay in Sully Hall anyway whenever I go to Birmingham. <laughs> it's just, just for you. Yeah. 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 But the Martin like, Leonard Arena. Yeah. As soon as we get yeah. ten, soon as we get seven thousand yeah. subs, why not? Yeah, that's it. But like me, hey guys, we, we could sponsor the Villa Stadium if we get seven thousand yeah. subs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but me personally, I wouldn't move from Villa Park. I just, I just love it too much. Like for so long, I was wanting to visit, and then when I finally did, and seeing the, the full color of claret and blue, considering over here, I'm like the only, probably the only one in Navan. Like. <laughs> And when I was just seeing a whole swarm of like claret and blue, I was like, I'm in heaven. So like for me, going to Villa Park is just the end all and be all. And anywhere else after that, I just couldn't picture it. Like I just personally wouldn't want it. I just say extend the stadium to 60 to 65,000. Like we have what the Euro 2028 is it, mm-hmm. where it's potentially going to be hosting the ground. So extend the stadium will take less time. And plus, you won't get done on an FFP standpoint like Everton are at the minute, you know, with building their stadium. That I know the PS horse, oh, we won't include that in the, you know, in the whole point deduction, but they did. So, like, I personally wouldn't touch it. I just stay where we are, extend the stadium, and you still keep the atmosphere and you keep the passion in the stadium. Fair play. Uh, um, just one, one final quick point on this as well. Um, obviously, if we did stay where we are, tourist-wise, HS2, the bit of a nightmare that it is, but it will cut journey times to 52 minutes from London to Birmingham. So if Villa are going to get as massive as we know they are, but if we get to be big Champions League regulars, then actually feasibly you could commute there in the same time you get to parts of London, to other parts of London for games. So just, just, a, point, just a point to make. Get the two yeah, another 52 minutes. minutes to get on the train now, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, 52 minutes down from an hour and 10 <laughs> yeah saying. yeah <laughs> rich says well, uh we've got nine 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 super super. Chat. um three and a half thousand great content keep them coming chaps hashtag vpp hashtag utmv um a couple of quick questions I, c- I can't go through all the comments on the um on the stadium stuff but most people I think it's fairly mixed, to be honest. Um, but I think most people are saying we, they wouldn't want to move. And and I, I think that's a, that's a general consensus. But quick fire questions. Um, very simple one from PJJ. An excellent question. Although, um, So, Sam, I'll come to you first. If you could recall any past Villa player out of retirement to play in the current team, who would it be? That's a good one. Oh, no, that's a good question. Uh... uh... Any Villa player out of retirement to play in the current team? Out of retirement, as in, yeah. like, they'd be playing as a 50-year-old or they'd be... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> You'd trans- transport them from their time with Villa. Yeah. Um, transport them from their time at Villa. Um, I'm just trying to think of a good right-back we've had. Uh... <laughs> Earl Barrett. <laughs> Earl Barrett, yeah, you're going to get Earl Barrett. Barrett was James, James Bree. James Bree. <laughs> <laughs> He's still playing. Um, I would say, I would say, I'd say, I'd say, a prime Jimmy Milner. I was a big fan of James Milner. I think he, he's exactly what we need. Nice. He's still playing though. Mm. He's still <laughs> play. Plays yeah, Brighton. Yeah, Brighton. Brighton. Yeah, Brighton. Bloody, okay, well, I can't bring him back. In. Uh, uh, Brighton up, Sam. Come on, Gareth Barry, a little Marshall midfield. Why not? He's still nice. playing five sides. Five sides. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> he's allowed him. He's allowed him. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've got loads in the chat here. Gary H says Dean Glover, <laughs> Lewis says York, 
Um, Rich says, Sam, always a voice of reason and facts, not always what people want to hear, but needs to be heard. There you go. There you go, Sam. Um, Sorry, Duncan, okay. uh, said D- David Platt, oh, uh, Michael God. Brian Little, Adamski says Brian Little, Rich says Tony Daly, uh, Marine Boy says Andy Gray, back to his best from Dundee, then with the days. Um, Adamski says Vassell as well. Stephen says Steve Staunton, Weston, Mark Walters, Tony Morley, Dennis Mortimer. Ethan says Adam H- Alan Hutton, Adam Hutton, Alan Hutton. Um, Rich, who are you <laughs> saying? <laughs> On um, this day in 1996, we beat Leeds and won the cup. And there was one striker who scored an absolute rocket to put us one and up who I would take out of retirement, Savo Milosevic. Boom, boom, boom. Winning. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Knowing like, the, 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 the challenges we have if Watkins was to get injured, I think Savo Milosevic would be absolutely fantastic. He scored a screamer, set um, Dwight York up for his goal. I think, I mean, he was unplayable that game. He wasn't great all of the time. But um, yeah, just because of the day it player. is. Yeah, because yeah. of the day it is, I'm going to go for Savo. Boys, nice. can, you, can you clear something up for me? The, old, the older boys in here. I never saw Savan Lasovic play. Um, I never know where he was actually good or not because it always seems to be a, a, a joke, but people do it. I don't. It was he decent or was he not? He was better, better than he ever got credit. Better for than a lot of people got yeah. given credit for. Yeah, he was slight, probably slightly ahead of his time in with yeah, regards to his technical ability. Um, he didn't have great pace, but like left-footed, like wand of a left foot, and, and really good technic, technical skills. So he'd actually probably do well now. Yeah, but he yeah, it took him ages to score, and then he got a he got a hat trick against Coventry. I remember. Um, but yeah, good good player. Um, uh, Chad from Villa Forever podcast says McGrath. John says Tony Morley. Uh, John uh, says uh, McGrath actually. Uh, James AVFC Lane says God, uh, as in Paul McGrath. Mm-hmm. Dunk says Savo was underrated. Um, <laughs> Gary says Stan. Oh, he was like Stan Collymore, but better. Um, James says he's got to be uh, Brian Little. Um, Dunk says best short-lived Villa player ever, Benito Carboni. Mark says Barry Melberg or Angel. Um, Good mm. Out of the trash says can't stay long, but congrats on three and a half k up the Villa. Um, and Mark also loved Savo. George, who would you say? Um, I would love to see a fully fit and firing heart of a lion, Martin Larson, in that in that um, defence. That year he had when he when he the injuries didn't get him, mate. He was I was gonna well, I won't use the F bomb. He was absolutely superb. Hmm. I've got like, I've he, got, he I've got head, his head on everything, didn't he? Absolutely everything. I've got an interesting little story about Martin Larson, because I agree with you. I think he used to get his head on everything. But um Curtis Davies, who I've had a few conversations with, who used to play alongside Martin Larson, said he was an absolute pain in the ass because he'd just go <laughs> and win headers that weren't his to win. <laughs> so like he, he, he did like he wasn't he didn't play in the position he should he just go and win everything and take everyone out along the way which just yeah he said he was brilliant for the fans he knew why all the fans loved him but he said playing alongside him he wasn't as 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 good as it was for the fans to watch him do it oh i loved him mate i thought he was so good he was class he really was uh martin who would you who would you bring back out of retirement big john Carew. Yeah, a yeah, proper, it's bigger than me and proper, you. A proper, a proper target man. Like he was unreal. <laughs> At young, whipping it into the box, John Carew. You'd have to oh. get him out of jail first, mine. To be fair, <laughs> I'll pay the bail. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Sam, if he's you know, not in jail, he's in the strip club. You know they do all these all or nothing shows now. Like you know all these clubs. Imagine Villa did one like, but he's breaking Carew out of jail and then he's <laughs> smuggling back through into the country and then play him in the first team. That yeah, is, that, 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 prison break. Yeah, prison break meets all or nothing. Very good. Well, he scored uh, two goals, didn't he? In the the five one game you were talking about earlier, I was yeah, I was yeah, there. Yes. I had to go, I had to yeah, go for yeah. a lie down afterwards. It was it was that intense. But yeah, him he, he got two in that game. He was unplayable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. David says Stan. I don't know if that's Collymore or Staunton. Petrov. Uh, or Petrov. 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 Trash says Carboni. Um, Lewis says, Sam, you're a year older than me, and he remembers Savo. Did you know what? The funny story, I, I was lucky enough to be in the box for the for the Ajax game, the 4-0. And as I was sat in the box, the, the, they open the door and they say, oh, there's just a, a former player just want, is coming in to say hello, as, as they sometimes do in the box. And this guy walks through the door, and I was so embarrassed, but for life of me, I had no idea who he was. 
and he didn't look that old. He looked like he was in his like in his early forties, maybe late thirties. I have absolutely no was, idea. It was, wasn't Franz Car, was it? Because they rolled him out in front of me and Kev the other day, and he, he spent about twenty minutes in a villa shirt. Oh, yeah, I've been trying to like Google wow. it to find out who it was, and so there's a guy next to me said. Uh, Go, go, is that Ian Taylor? I said, no, he's not the right shade. <laughs> he's not the right shade. <laughs> <laughs> he's significantly lighter. Um, it probably was what, Franz Car then. Might be Franz yeah. Car, yeah. Look at Franz yeah. Car. Come on, Sam, we going. All right, let me Google that. Franz Car, um, how are you spelling that? F-R-A-N-Z. He, he was more famous for Nottingham Forest, to be honest. Yeah, he was. Uh, Stephen Van Lees has Savo Misalotovic. That was, that was his nickname. Uh, Wayne says, best players I've seen, John Goodman, David Platt, Paul McGrath. Supermark says, Bosco Balaban. <laughs> <laughs> Dunk says, most underrated player for me, Julian Joachim. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was good, and- Joachim. Mm. Yeah, Gary's was Ian and Orman oh. Droid. Orman Droid um, and Ian only. They were brilliant. Oh, John too. Gidman. Yeah, John Gidman. Sorry, John yeah. Gidman. Um, Prime Gabby says Ethan. Um, Lisa's career was overrated. Um, I oh, know. Uh, David says Petrov. Good shout. Good That's shout. Great shout. Rub says Ugo Ehiog. Yeah, great player. Um, Does anyone even say Gareth Barry? Yeah, I think who said Gar- uh, Sam said Gareth Barry, didn't you? Oh, yeah. geez, I didn't hear that. David song, says uh, Alan Wright left back. Yes, Dalian would be great. I was going to say Dalian Atkinson. Uh, that would probably be mine or or, or Tony Daly in his prime. Um, Tony Daly Kev... could do a job now. Yeah, I know he could. Well, um, I've got to shoot off. Much love to everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah, Sam. Oh, Sam, legend. See you later, Sam. Don't Sam. be strange. Right. Jump, on ne- jump on next week. I'll do, I'll do. When Watkins yeah. scores, please. I'll tell um, you there with a walking shirt. Don't worry, boys. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, mate. I think it's a tricky one to think about players that I've actually seen play that are retired or players that I know would be able to add a bit of value. I think the Platt shout, Platt was my first real Villa, Villa like love, to be fair, in terms of when he was absolutely on fire um, just before, you know, the uh, the World Cup 90. Um, Gordon Cowens, I think, would be unbelievable in this team. Absolute yeah. magician. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, uh, George, I had a quick look when you uh, mentioned your first Villa game earlier, and that was that was Cowens' last appearance of his second spell at Villa. I mean, he came back Oh, really, from- yeah? third spell but that was his last appearance at 4-1 defeat to Leeds yeah oh, okay um, but Cowens was absolutely unbelievable for those that haven't seen him and for those younger ones watching you know he's just an absolute majestic footballer that's, but, what, uh, that's what I was going to use majestic yeah okay um well but I, I'm not going to go for those I'm going to go for um uh Mr Tom Pongo wearing um, <laughs> <laughs> There's, uh, 159 goals in 216 games. Um, he got 167 goals in total in 226 appearances, 10 hat tricks, and a club record 49 league goals in the 30 31 season. 50 goals in all competitions. Um, he wasn't say, I mean, he missed that game, he missed a lot. He wasn't right. proper football back then. <laughs> Uh, well, listen to listen to this. Uh, the Birmingham Daily Gazette described Pongo in his heyday over six foot tall and tough as teak. His gold lashes were electrifying, and if he could not get adequate service from the wings, he would went out and got the ball himself, would streak his way through opposing defences, and then turn around grinning all over his face. Uh, and after Eric Cantona's altercation with a fan, a pensioner in Alton said that Waring picked the ball up once and jumped into the crowd and gave him a thump. So um, <laughs> had a bit of character, but I'm just thinking. Tom Waring or maybe Gary Shaw or whenever saw play, someone yeah. who could be a goal scorer who could get us over the line. So, yeah, that, that's my choice. Nice. Uh, Lee says he always loved Angel. Dunk says Dalian was quality. <laughs> Out of the trash. I was a fan of Mark Bosnich. <laughs> I won't make yeah. any alleged comments there, though. <laughs> mm. David said Dean Saunders. Um, Adamski Vassell was the first player, I remember, doing crazy stepovers. I don't think um, he meant to, yeah. though. No, yeah. Gary says my pal called his dog Bosco, not after Balaban, but BA Baracus, apparently. <laughs> um, Dunks, Dino Daly and Dwight was our best striker trio ever. Amazing. Uh, Michael says Karen's is a god. James Wood said Luke Nillis, yeah. remember him? Um, James uh, said Ray Graydon was his first villa hero. Um, hmm. Dunks, P- uh, Pongo stat wise, our best player. Um, McGrath is God, says Rich. Uh, Stephen says Saunders was the first player's name he got on his shirt. Um, Rub says not retired, but loved prime Ashley Young. 
Um, yeah, I think PJJ has mentioned that as well. Um, I've right. seen a, I'll, I'll, another quick fire one. I saw a good question from Gary. Um, guys, if before I do that, though, don't forget the competition. Remember, hit us up on Twitter. Check out Villa Park Pod on Twitter. Follow the instructions. So you need to follow Matty723. You need to um, retweet the tweet and make sure you subscribe, basically, and all do the same on um, on Instagram. Um, so, yeah, you can be in with a chance of winning this at the end of the show. I've added some names as we've been going. So, please, uh, if you haven't already, do uh, try and get yourself the chance to win. Um, and also, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button as well. We've got over 80 people watching, which is brilliant. Um, if you haven't liked already, smash the like button. And if you're new to the channel, we are 3,550, I think, on last check. So, great great growth since we've hit that three and a half thousand mark so we want to hit 4k as soon as possible so you guys can help us do that if you want to donate to the channel via super chat as well or become a member it's just 199 to become a member hit the dollar sign and the or the join sign and uh, follow the instructions from there um so yeah gary said who was your favorite player but not really any good <laughs> i remember remember sasa Sasa Turchis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he had a nose on him, didn't he? He he came with like such a reputation and I really, really liked it. Everyone got really excited when he got the ball. But he was just terrible for Villa. <laughs> just remember him remember him being terrible. Um so he he's he's probably one for me that I think we all really wanted him to play well and then never. And do you remember Neil Lamptey as well? Yeah. Oh, he used he to juggle with an the... orange Neil Lamptey yeah, from Ghana. He was brilliant, the... yeah. The, the, oh, I can't remember where he was from, but he was basically their Ghana. version of Pele. Was it the Ghanaian Pele or something they're yeah. called? <laughs> he was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't too bad, actually. He wasn't too bad. I rather, yeah, he wasn't as, as good as that we, we thought he was going to be. But I don't, that's a really good question because there's so many like Villa players that, um, that just really haven't stepped up. Borja Baston rings someone the Someone that mind. you liked, someone that you liked though, that wasn't very, yeah. that wasn't actually very good. It's a difficult question, isn't it? Because you've got to like them. They've got actually got to be mm. half decent. Because we're so used to slating everybody for just like giving a giving the ball away. Oh, oh, Conor oh, Horan oh. is, is one for me. What I think, I, don't, uh, I think he didn't get as much credit he deserved. Conor Horan. Yeah, I thought yeah, I see really, what you're I saying. Really I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of him, but. I think he was a decent player, but I know I know what you're saying. He was probably more underrated than actually not being very good, though. Him and Charles and Zogbia. Yeah, and Zogbia. I actually did yeah, like yeah. Charles and Zogbia now. Prob- probably, yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad shout. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've got one, a random one as well. I'm, I'm going to say Scott Hogan. Um, oh, I could not stand him. <laughs> Because, did you like him though? Did you like him? Yeah, because when we signed him, I'd been like thinking of us in the championship that run. I remember thinking he was banging in goals left, right, and centre for Brent. He looked unbelievable for Brentford. We signed him. He never got his chance in the team. Then he went on a bit of a scoring run for a few games in a row. And I was just really rooting for him. He worked really hard. But in the end, he wasn't very good. But there was a period of time where I remember thinking, just give Hogan a chance. He's going to pack a goal. He just needs an opportunity. Well, ju- during that time, Villa were like the the big money in the league, weren't we? So yeah. we had the Hogan. We've got Ross McCormack, who is an absolute farce of a signing, but we could just go and splash cash on players just so other teams didn't get them. And yeah, I remember thinking Hogan could have done well, but we never played. It was, all, it was too big for, it was too big for all them players, wasn't it? The villa yeah, was too big for them. Yeah. 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 No, you're yeah. right. You absolutely were. Um, players that we liked. Oh, it's a good one. My one's um, like Stan, Stan, Stan Collymore all day long. Yeah, he he. That should have been that should have been a match made in heaven. That and mm. it, it just didn't work out, did it? It's never such happened, a shame. Yeah. I thought I thought we were title contenders when we signed him. Yeah, that's yeah. Good point. I mean, this never um, really never nothing happened for him. Who's in the chat? Who's in the chat? Uh, uh, out of the trash says Robert Perez was crap for us. Gary said uh, he's a right ladies man. Is Sasa? Yeah, he was on like some Croatian Big Brother or something. Mm-hmm. Dunk said Lamptey was electric v Wigan. Mark Farrington says Graham Fenton. Oh, um, Graham Fenton. Yeah, I remember him. What about Lansbury? Yeah, yeah that's actually, yeah. Yeah, never never worked for him. Did he? He scored a good nice goal against Leeds, um, and that was probably his highlight at the Villa. Yeah. Well, he scored. Did he score another goal that got chalked off? Against yeah, against um, Palace, wasn't it? Against your Palace, team, yes. 
Um, uh, yeah. Yes. Low, yeah, few people saying Collymore. Um, Someone mentioned Ron, Ron Vlar. Guy Ron Vlar. Yeah, Ron Vlar, Concrete Run. John, yeah. Uh, Collymore. Yeah. yeah, you probably want players who weren't particularly technical. Neil Taylor. That's a, not a bad one. Everyone liked yeah, Neil Taylor, that, didn't they, for a bit? He was all right. Yeah, he was all right. But What about um, El Mahavadi? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I but, yeah, was good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'd say it would be a good one for this. Freddie Gilbert. Everyone seems to like Freddie Gilbert, didn't they? But yeah. he went great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he used to run around a lot. Yeah. A Doma, yeah. a Doma's one that in the championship was he was good, but um, Albert Doma, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Alpi says uh, Chad. Um, yeah, like, well, Morgan that's good, Sanson you know. says mm. Ethan. Mm. Um, Heskey, Heskey says Ryan. Yeah. Tommy Johnson says Lee. That's a great oh, show. Tommy That's Johnson. a great show. Yeah, great show. Um, marvelous the oh, Yeah, marvelous, marvelous. Not a bad show at all. Mar- Marlon, yes, Hair, that's a brilliant show actually. Marvelous. Yeah. yeah, lads, I'm gonna have to jump off. Right, I'm up very early in the morning for work. So, legend Martin. Here we are, Take it easy. Later. See you next see you in the week. Adama Traore says out of the trash. Milan Barros says Adamski. Um, so lo- yeah, loads. That's a great one. That's a great question. Mm. Um, we'll do a couple more. Um, let me just see. I had a question from James. Just bear with me. Uh, let's just find the question. Da, 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 da. So he says, what player would be your dream signing in the summer? And with the new sponsors, is that good for P- uh, profit sustainability FFP? Okay. So yeah, what player would be the dream signing in the summer? Hmm. It's a question, isn't it? Because it's like, where, where do we need, where do we, where do we need to strengthen? Really, and um, we talk, we're talking realistically as opposed to like pie in the sky. Well, it says dream signing, but yeah, I suppose it's got to be slightly more realistic. Yeah, not like Mbappe or something, which Lewis has come in with there. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> if if everything's true about this, that's Williams uh, at Atletico, then I think that um, yeah, there you go. Then everything I've and I've seen a few clips clips of him. If everything's true, then I think he's the absolute real deal, and I think he would be, um, you know, would be an unbelievable part of that. You know, that, that front three. If you had Bailey, Bailey Watkins, and him, I think that'd be absolutely incredible. I think every, every, outside of that, you could, you could pick, you know, a, a playmaker like a. Obviously, we were linked with Felix, weren't we? Um, you could pick a, you know, that see that Frimpong's really highly rated, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Frimpong, John says, or um, Dybala. Yeah, playmaker wise, few people in the chat. So Dunks, Dunks always said this uh, that Pedro Gonçalves. I did a little thing on him the other day. Um, uh, John says Frimpong, like I said. Rub says Palacios. Uh, Dumfries um, at right back too. Gaza saying Jack. Um, we've been we've been on Jack already. Um, Neil says Jack. David says Peter Enkelman. I think that was for the last <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that man's the day I die. Um, Evan Ferguson says David. Uh, Mikel Marino Ooh, says Adamski. Really yeah, any any for you boys? It's tricky, isn't it? It's tricky because, uh, and, and I think one of the reasons for our silence is we have a really good first eleven, um, and. I don't know. There's there's definitely some improvements that need to be made to the squad. We've mentioned some players already this evening that um, you know we think you know, we mentioned Jack and a few others that we think could probably bring something more to the the squad. But I don't know. I, I still think we need someone to pick up the ball in the middle of the park and and run through a midfield. Someone that can just create some magic that's like. It's really skillful on the ball. I don't know what the answer, which player is the answer to, to that though. But I think we 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 miss some of that guile in the middle of the park at the moment. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone for you, George? Or you have? Uh, I think Rachel said whoever whoever Emery wants, basically. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. I don't watch a great deal of the European football, so like the foreign names now to me, I I don't really know until they've come over. But in this country, you know, we mentioned them quite a lot, didn't we? Elise and Eze at Palace. Both lovely footballers and, you know, would a step up do either of them the world of good if we was to get the Champions League, you know, it could light it, could light it up, couldn't they? But again, yeah. financially, I couldn't see that happening for us. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, they, they'll definitely be popular. Um, 
they'll definitely be popular as the um, you know uh, in the preseason. Hundred percent, one of those yeah. two will will potentially go. I mean, I know they've changed their manager, but you've got to think that they will. I think you know, they lose both bridge. Yeah, yeah, you've got to think. You've got to think. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Like it's it's always like you said, boys. It's difficult to say because I I would imagine that we'll try and get our business done pretty early. But the only problem with getting that business done early is you bring your players in and then you struggle to get the players out. You know, like unless unless it's going to be you know a Louise goes or someone like that who's obviously going to be hot property. Um, but it's it's sometimes difficult to get rid of the players. Like we've seen we've got to get Dendonka back. Like you know, oh, no one that today, definitely yeah. don't want him. You know, it's and, and got to sign, be back as well. Got to sign Cameron Archer back. Yeah, so it's it's Chambers, really difficult to get rid Chambers of Chambers ain't going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ethan says Neto. Um, he'll he'll yeah, definitely pop out. Yeah, he's class. That's a great shout. Peter Peter Holdstock says Philogene Jean from Hull. Um, Gary says Gonchalves. Yes, but he'd like Jonathan David. Uh, Michael says Eze. Um, uh, then we have uh, Wayne Deer coming says back. Says one of the... Nusa. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, um, Lee said Wayne Deer and Mings are obviously coming back. So Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a big boost. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you think the Dan Donker thing was a bit weird? Because do you not think you could do it like we kind of need him right now? He'd be good yeah, to bring him back over. Yeah, yeah. He's only played like three three sub appearances, isn't he? Yeah. He's well, they changed their manager, didn't they? So he wasn't too bad. Like the, when he came off the bench, he, he, he put a good shift in. He got himself he's around the edit, bench. He? Yeah, he yeah, put some tackles in and break the game up. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mind him. Yeah, Wayne says Emil Smith Rowe. Um, yeah. Frimpunk says Deco and Mikhail Marino says uh, Adamski. Um, loads loads of um, loads of uh, comments coming in. Um, Another question. Um, this one's probably a little bit more, a little bit more serious on that. Son, and then we'll go to last couple on the uh, on the kind of quick fire ones. Um, so, a question from Mark Willis had said, "Do you think there's a tag pot on supporters that don't live near and can attend Villa Park?" Some fans say that it, if you don't attend games, you're not a proper supporter. And um, for context, he's only been to our home three times, but has supported Villa since he was four. Um, George, I guess this is not a bad one for you. Like, obviously, you've got a season ticket, I know, but like living away from her, away. But I, I'm always one of these. It's like you know, just because you don't can't get to games all the time doesn't mean that you support the team any less. It's you know, we all love Villa, and this is why like these podcasts and stuff exist, like ourselves, to kind of bring that to people. Yeah, fully agree, mate. It's never really bothered me if someone doesn't go or can't go. I mean, you don't know other people's circumstances, do you? Everyone's got different lives, different, you know, stuff they want to spend their money on or have to spend their money on. So I'm not one to judge on that. Um, I do, there's, there's, there is a certain type of fan that riles me though. You know, you, you get the fan that they support a team when they've beaten your team and they're not interested any other time. They're basically just using using a team as a bit of leverage to give you stick. I've, I've never had any time for that. So then I will, if they're doing that, I will pull the line out on them then saying you've never seen your ground or whatever. But no, in general, mate, if, if you support your team, you love your club, and you know, and you, you dedicate, dedicate a bit of time to supporting them, you know, whether it's on the TV or doing something like this, then fair play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Michael said an out, it's an outdated view. I, I do think that the same. I don't think there's too many Villa fans that would say stuff like that. I mean, you sometimes get ones who will say stuff, you know, on on, on X or, or Twitter or whatever and just say, you know, oh, well, it, it, I guess if if sometimes supporters who don't go to games a lot will moan about them not being able to get tickets, I think that's sometimes a situation like you know. But it should be you should obviously cater for people that can't go enough. But you have to re- you have to kind of give the opportunity or first refusal to the fans who do go week in week out. It's just it's just the way it is, isn't it? But it doesn't make you a less of a supporter, does it, Kev? No, absolutely not, absolutely not. And I can think about times in my life when. You know, from a, a pretty, you know, poor upbringing, didn't really go to many games at all. Um, then I had a flurry of games in my 20s, but I spent a lot of my early 20s away. And whenever I was work, working in Greece or, you know, living in Australia, or whatever, I was still as passionately a Villa fan as anybody, you know, who, who was going to the games. Um, obviously, you know, now we, we sell out pretty much most games. So I think it's difficult, even if you really wanted to go. And clearly people have got family commitments. We've discussed how 
We talked about Martin early, didn't he, Sam? And he gets to the game, he gets to train, and it's really easy for him. But if you've got a couple of kids and you're coming from a 40 miles away, it's not so simple. You've got to think where you're going to park. And, you know, I, I've had no nightmares myself with me and my two kids getting away from European games. So it's not always that simple. But I'm, I think the point is valid where if you've got a situation with someone that probably has got enough disposable income at a time where, say, it's either maybe a Carabao Cup game against Everton and we don't sell out or in the championship when we didn't sell out some games, then maybe there's an argument to make, well, I'm going to put your money where your mouth is. If you say you want to support your team, there's, there's tickets available, go. But just generally, you know, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I've only been to one England game in my life. Um, I like to leave after 60 minutes because my kids had a bit of a meltdown. Um, but it um, doesn't mean I'm any less of obviously, obviously, obviously an England football fan when they're in tournaments. So, yeah, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Rich, anything to say on that one? Um, no, nothing really to, to add. You know, as you both have said, like you just don't know people's circumstances. So, yeah, you know, look, I've got I've got a season ticket, and and Kev will tell you I'll probably go to 40 percent of the games because I've got three children. I've got a, a life outside of Aston Villa that comes before Aston Villa. Um, so. <gasps> What? I know, yeah, I know, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. So, so if, if, I, if I'm fortunate enough to be free and, you know, I'll, I'll work it most of the time so I can, can go because I, I, you know, get to spend time with my, my dad there as well. And clearly I just love going to, to the villa. But, yeah, it's a tricky one as, as well. I, I, I think the villa have got a reward loyalty. So when it comes to some of the bigger games and they're selling tickets, it's got to go to people that have, you know, been there week in, week out, have got the ticket stubs, you know, they've, they've got the, the, the bookings linked to their fan ID, et cetera, et cetera. But listen, if, if you live in, I don't know, Dundee or you live in Perth and, you, you know, you occasionally get the game on, on TV and you never go to Villa Park, that's fine because what what all these people are, are they're cheerleaders for Aston Villa. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we speak earlier, we, sorry, we spoke earlier about why we support Aston Villa. There'll be someone somewhere in a different country that supports Aston Villa because some guy told them about how great, I don't know, Dwight York was because they, they saw it on, on a, you know, on a sky game. So it's important that you know, there's, there's a community that we're trying to create. And we spoke earlier, we can't, if we wanted to see every Villa fan at Villa Park, we wouldn't be able to anyway. So yeah, I'm fortunate that I don't live too far away. So it's it's not the end of the world. If I'm leaving Villa Park, I could be home sometimes in like 25, 30 minutes. Uh, but yeah, like if you support Aston Villa, then fine, you know, get to the stadium if you can. If you can't buy a shirt, if you can't do that, just tell someone about how good they are. And as you know, um, we were talking about this, this earlier, there's so many different memories that people have had of being Villa fans. Who are we to decide that, it, that they should only have that allegiance to Aston Villa if they can go to the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just before we finish up, a uh, couple more, couple more questions. Thoughts on concert and Watkins yesterday? Obviously, England played. We got to, we got to talk about it. Lots of people in the chat are impressed with concert. Superb. Um, as says Rich, and like I said, loads earlier on saying he's brilliant. Um, obviously, a bit more of a frustrating one for Ollie. George, your, did you watch? Did you watch the game first? He and did you, did you check out? Um, did you check out like Conter and Watkins' performances? Uh, I caught a bit of the game, not too much to be fair. Um, all, from what I could see, Watkins wasn't really getting much. There weren't much coming to him. You know, it was all a bit disjointed behind him, and the final ball wasn't coming through, or the cross never made it. I see he had one chance, which he kind of he looked like he poked it over, but I think the defender got a foot in, so it kind of yeah, made it look he a did, bit, yeah, a bit worse. It looked like a bad, a bad miss when it wasn't. You know, so maybe a bit of a frustrating night for him. Um, yeah, I did actually see when Konza come on and I was thoroughly impressed with his little cameo. I think he really made the most of his, you know, however many minutes it was. Good on the ball, quick to the tackle like he normally is at Villa. Just looked assured and confident and um, I already done his chances, no harm. And I think the fans would have um, been impressed with what they saw as well. Yeah, yeah. Rich, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with what George says. I, th- I think um, Konza coming on in arguably his weaker position... Will, will will do him a world of good from a, a versatility perspective for that England squad. So, yeah, I mean, to get your debut against Brazil, to be playing against some of the players that he did and, and, and to not put a foot wrong, uh, you know, it, it, it looked like he, he played there all his life. Yeah, yeah. A um, few people in the chat. Deco says Conta was phenomenal. Gaza, Conta was class. Um, 
And Dico also says, Southgate ball is hard to watch. Uh, Michael said, just waiting for Sky to say, Consa wants to leave. <laughs> yeah, wait for it. <laughs> Chilwell was also very entertaining. Oh, it was a terrible performance from Chilwell. Folk says, Consa Mint, Ollie worked hard. Rich says, Consa was his usual self, just pure class. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rachel said, Consa was good, but it was difficult for Ollie. Uh, shame for him. Um, yeah, Watkins shot was corner, not given. Um, yeah, all, all Gazza really cares about is players getting back to Villa Park unscathed. Um, Cons was slick and service was poor to Watkins, says Peter. Yeah, Kev, your thoughts on on, a, on the performance yesterday? Yeah, I listened to most of the first half on the radio. I was driving back from somewhere and then I watched sort of back end of the first half and then all the second half. Um, I mean, I thought Watkins was looked pretty tidy, actually, the touches he had. I, thought I he did. Was, he had a couple um, of good runs to, uh, on the you know yeah. right and left hand side and they just didn't yeah. use him enough. Like I thought, I actually thought. Um, sorry to jump in. I didn't think Foden was particularly good, and I actually thought Bellingham, although he's like, he's, he's you know, his physic, his physicality is brilliant and everything. I just, I didn't think he played very well. I think he was trying to do too, way too much, yeah. and he was, he was sacri- like, he wasn't get feeding Watkins. He was trying yeah. to do it all by himself. Yeah, Rashford, I didn't think it was great. I mean, why well, just put the ball in the box every now and then, you know, rather than trying to take take it on and fail every time. Um, so I didn't think he got the service, but I thought what he, when he did get the ball, I thought he looked bright. I thought he looked energetic. I thought he looked strong. I thought it bodes well for Villa. I'm hoping actually that Tony plays in the next game, so he's fresh uh, for obviously for Wolves. Yeah. <coughs> um, Konza came on after 20 minutes, so he got ne- pretty much within a bit of injury time over there. Nearly nearly a whole game. I thought he looked really comfortable, really comfortable. Like looked like he didn't wasn't out of place at all. I think he just he just looked like a class act. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it was just great to see obviously those two on the pitch with, with Douglas Luiz as well. Just you know, it goes, mad on it. Three Villa yeah. players on, on you know, England v Brazil game, crazy, yeah. but yeah, the concert was excellent. And to be marked to be marking um Vinicius Jr. and doing as well as he did, you know, uh, was great. But I do, I, I always think sometimes playing those friend, those high profile friendlies, uh, I think that you learn like Southgate and the coaches will learn quite a bit out of it but sometimes it opens up quest more questions than you wanted you know mm-hmm. you look at kind of Lewis Dunk at left at, at kind of one of the center back positions or Ben Chilwell needing games or Gallagher just you know some of the players you can just see like when they get to that top level you know in say if if we do manage to get to like the quarterfinals of the Euros some of our players are going to be found <coughs> found wanting to Still, I, I just, I, I, you know, I can't see us, I can't see us winning it. I really can't. I just can't. I hope I'm wrong, but no, I can't see it. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, you was all being very quiet about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Um, so yeah, just just to finish up uh, the show before I do the quick, um, before I do the quick. Uh, what uh, the competition um, wanted to just get a question from powerfully hopped. Uh, where's he put? Where's the question he's put? Where did the we all follow the villa come from? Does anyone want to? Does anyone want to show? Does anyone want to give us the answer? No, idea. it's a song, isn't it? Yeah, I O I O is up. Yeah, it's it's up, up. Yeah. Here we go. And if you are a city fan, surrender, surrender. All, you die. surrender all you die. We all we follow the villa. That's where it comes yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone says up the villa on their one so I thought we needed to have something yeah. different that's a good little slogan Rich you've done well with that one so, so, that, so there you go cheers yeah. George mm-hmm. um, also talking of we all follow the villa we have a new logo which we'll be, we'll be sporting on all our socials um, it did cause quite a bit of debate um, so I will show it to everyone now um, what are your thoughts on this um, Kev do you like your picture not really, you know. <laughs> I like the one Kevin looks like. <laughs> no, yeah. um, Mark Asper sent another picture, but, you know, open. my hair's not that light, but you know what? I'm not that precious around it, really. So I um, think you look good. Thanks, mate. I'll take that. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Rich, you look like you've been let out for the day. <laughs> well, you're not even on there, Rich. At least I sent a photo of myself. Who's the model? Who's the <laughs> yeah, model? Who's the model? <laughs> Neck, Mark, neck down, like you're just in, yeah. in, in tight boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and George, George, you got the cap on because the hair wasn't quite right. Yeah, do you know what? When I first saw it, I was, I was like, oh, yeah, that's all right. 
And then um, the missus come and looked earlier. I said, oh, look. I said, look at our pictures on here. She goes, what, why are you ginger? <laughs> and when she said that, I was like, it's got to be changed now because I'm going to be thinking that all the time. So, so um, yeah, Mark said that he could he could do one. He, he got another picture of me in a hat. So I said, I'll just go with that then. So, yeah, I'm happy enough, mate. It looks all right. But no, Mark's done a fantastic job. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that'll be that'll be on the uh, on the socials. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Adiko said, "Which one's Kev?" <laughs> <laughs> Gareth wasn't happy about his picture either. Adamski no. says, "Loves it." Uh, Steven said, "That cheered everyone up." Dunk said, it's "Superb." Michelle likes it. I look like Jermaine Defoe, apparently. I'll take that one. <laughs> I'll take that one. Um, <laughs> Someone looks like the guy from King of the Hill. <laughs> that's a great one. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Rich, Rich B, I think. Yeah, yeah Rich that's B. you, I was Rich. just thinking, oh, who does he remind me of? And that's what it was. <laughs> I'll have to look at who King of the Hill guy is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cartoon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wanted poster, says David. There, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, right, just to finish up, we'll, we'll uh, announce the winner of the... Uh, the Dennis Mortimer um, lifting the Europe, European Cup print. We will have another competition as well um, very soon with Matty723. Um, we've got another print to give away, but just just doing this one for tonight as a special. Um, <laughs> Ethan said we might as well put it as the Villa badge. There we go. There we go. <laughs> see, I've already, I've already um, sorted the Villa badge out. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, Kev already did that one. Yeah, you got you got to check that one out. Uh, yeah. But yeah, here we have our. Um, here we have our entrance. So I will pick a random pick. Use the random name generated to pick a random name as who won. And it is oh, look at that. Martin Leonard Senior. <laughs> fix. It's a fix. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's got to be watching. He's got to be watching. He has entered every competition and he has uh, been desperate to win. Martin Leonard Senior. There you go, mate. You've won the competition. Fantastic, Six. fantastic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well done, well done. We can't read your it's Martin Lender Senior, I promise you. It's not um it's not it's not the it's not the man himself, I promise you. But um yeah, boys, once again, three and a half thousand subscribers, tremendous, tremendous achievement. Um thank you to you all for your support. Thank you to Gareth, who's not on tonight, Mark, as we've said before, Max as well. Martin and Sam and you boys, it's, it's, it's just tremendous. Thank you for everyone for your support who's been watching. Um, yeah, amazing stuff. Like, and to, you know, we always we always say, Kev, don't we? Like, it's crazy. We, we get people watching from all over the world and people yeah. commenting, people saying, you know, well done, what a job you're doing. And essentially, we're just chatting rubbish about Villa. Yeah, yeah, chatting rubbish uh, about the villa yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah thank you so much for all your questions thank you for your contributions um boys thanks so much on to the next three and a half k we'll i'm sure we'll do another q a maybe when we get to five thousand this time um but yeah we'll be back obviously premier league football will be back this time next week um we'll be reflecting on the wolves game um we've got loads of shows coming up in the week fans forum the match preview any transfer talk any rumors maybe some lunchtime lives as well to for my jamaican friends maybe if leon bailey uh, has some more news but yeah thank you everyone for watching and as always remember we all follow the villa